Virgo. Welcome to your soul ties reading for whatever time period when you see it. I'm going to do like three or four spreads for y'all. The first one is my regular seven card spread. Then I'm going to do an attraction spread to find out their physical, mental, emotional attraction. Then I'm going to do past, present, future. And then I'm going to pull a little reading oracle card. So can I get seven cards for this Virgo and their person? Okay, so far if this is for you, you see them as a sign. So you can see them as enlightened, as a source of your happiness. Well, not the main source, but somebody who when you're around, you feel more happy. You see them as growing right before your eyes, or they have like a glow about them. Okay, what is this person's issue with Virgo? Okay, the United Forest. Okay. Um The United Force currently is Nine of Pentacles, which is a Virgo card. Um well deserved reward. Both people are trying to become self sufficient or if you already are maintaining your self sufficiency. They could be working on their business plans or anything paying people off um <laughs> whatever it is around the connection that they need to work on on their own it could be their own spiritual growth feeling comfortable within their own skin with the nine of pentacles being in united forest that's what both people are kind of focused on like the thing that they have in common um i'm gonna pull from i'm gonna pull a message from Rumi. I'm not going to read this message to the end. I'm going to clarify all these in a minute. I don't think that was it. Can I get one card for Virgo as it relates to this? Okay. What the stack? It says, the carriage of your love. Okay. So you can see it's two people and like some sort of light from out in the ethers or wherever this is, is being shined on them or is something trying to pull them together or I don't know, but I'm going to read the message for this at the end. I never read the message for that card before. So I'm going to pull some clarifiers. If this is for you, you see them as the sun. Please clarify this sign for how Virgo sees them. Temperance and the Queen of Wands. So they could be a Sagittarius. Because Temperance is a Sagittarius card. Queen of Wands could represent this, a Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. So. Could be a Leo too because Sun represents Leo. Um, or you can see them as just very peaceful like magical uh, alchemist with temperance temperance is about alchemy being peaceful you can see them as very peaceful or patient or just a Sagittarius somebody who's innovative and likes to breathe life into new ideas somebody who does not follow the crowd somebody who's very much a leader likes to do things their own way who is active they could like to work out a lot or I don't know, but you see them in a very positive light if this is for you. But how you feel towards them is the three of swords. So you could feel like they broke your heart or vice versa. Um, you could have broke theirs. You feel separate from them, like they're isolating themselves from you. Or you have to isolate yourself from them. Everything I say could be vice versa. And if you see something, if you see a particular car and you hear something or feel something that I don't say, go with your own intuition before mine. Please clarify these three of swords for Virgo. How Virgo feels towards this person. 
this three of swords about? Okay. This could be somebody who you had a commitment with that was ended because of some sort of betrayal on somebody's part, one person's part or the other. So there is an emotional disconnect or confusion, but there's still like a strong tie being felt or bond being felt between y'all. But there could have been like consistent betrayals or confusion. That led to an ending. You could want to be have a family with this person. But they don't trust you or you don't trust them. Could already have kids with this person. There are children here. So it's like you want to come out of isolation with them. Okay. Your issue with them is death. So I feel like they could have ended it or you felt like you had to. <clears throat> oh, actually, this is justice. So your issue with them is someone being fair. It says detached because it's about attach detaching from your emotions. So you can feel like they don't acknowledge their emotions towards you or your emotions towards them. They don't acknowledge it. They could be or seem emotionally detached from you. Um... Or be ignoring the way you feel. They could have released this connection. Or you feel like they did. Or you feel like you had to. But. Or you could feel like they're not being fair. Please clarify this justice card being Virgo's issue. So your issue could be. Trying to move past or see past some sort of injustice and allow yourself to open up emotionally is the issue. Like you don't, you could feel like you don't know how you would be able to open up to them because they weren't fair to you in the past or could have betrayed you or something in the past. Keep in mind, everything could be vice versa. Just take it as it applies to your situation, if it even like applies to your situation. But how they see you, if that matched you, is the five of cups. <clears throat> so having a lot of regrets, looking back on things, wishing they did things or said things differently or um, they could be wanting to look away or not wanting to think about it so much, but they always get pulled back emotionally into Sadness about the situation. Please clarify this one because how does this person see Leah? I mean, Virgo. How does this person see Virgo? Okay, you could have caused them some emotional pain and they're trying to move forward. They're trying to see the table turn. They don't want to feel hurt anymore. Keep in mind, it could be vice versa or not. Yeah, they're trying to keep, or they can see that you, because this is how they see you, they can see that you're trying to keep your eyes focused on positive, like with the sun coming out. You're trying to keep your eyes to the sunlight instead of looking back at the shadows of whatever pain happened in the past. They see you're not trying to stay stuck in the past. <laughs> okay, how they feel towards you is the three of pentacles. Both of you have three, so there could have been um, some betrayal as opposed, I mean, when it comes to like extra people being in the situation. How do they feel towards? Okay, so they want to be able to cooperate with you. This is about, like, it looks like steps to people's hands, well, <laughs> being used to create steps, which I see as both people putting action into building something together. 
that's what they well how they feel towards you they don't want to start doing that again with the ace of wands that's about something new a new flame about uh, some sort of new action being taken so maybe you wanted to build things in a different way yeah so they want to cooperate with you if they know things are going to go in a way that benefits both people and will lead to the four of wands which is stability solid foundations um happy home life Like both of these people seem very content and like they know they're both that they can depend on each other. They seem very much at peace. So that's how they feel. They want to cooperate with you if they could trust that it would be genuine. With the Six of Cups at the bottom, that's about genuine love. Like, no hidden agendas. It's about a childlike um, connection. Going back to how things were when it started. Okay. Um, Their issue with you is teach. So, they could feel like you're stuck in your ways with the Hierophant card. They could feel like, with this being an issue, they don't, that you don't listen to the way they feel like things should be done. They could feel like you're bossy or stuck in your ways. Or this could be literally their issue. I don't know. But let's go into the attraction spread for Virgo. I'm going to pause it. I got to blow my nose. All right. I don't know why I moved that because I got to read that at the end. So I'm going to pull three cards. How does this person feel physically attracted to this Virgo? The sun. Okay. What is their, how do they feel mentally connected to Virgo? Wow. Two of cups. What is their emotional um, connection that they feel they have to Virgo. How do they feel emotionally connected to Virgo? That's a lot. Like, that's a lot. So I'm going to take all of it. We got death and nine of swords. So worrying, it, worrying about is it over because things went wrong in the past. The five of cups came out for how they see you. And... Wanted to nurture, but I'm going to start with the physical. Okay, the physical attraction to you, Virgo, is the sun, which I believe came out for how they see you anyway, so it makes sense. Um, so like I said, <laughs> when, it, when it came out before, they feel like you have a glow about you, you're able to help things grow, you're able to nurture things into growth, able to make them see things in a way that they never seen it. They could feel like you're an enlightened person. You bring growth and expansion to their life. Um, their mental connection to you is like y'all connect like no other. With the two of cups, it's only two people here. Both their energy is being poured into something and creating a whole, like it's the mental bond that y'all have. They have never felt with anybody else. Like, I don't know if it's the conversations that y'all have or... The way you both look at things. But their emotional connection to you currently. Yeah, death first. So wanting to end some sort of stressful. Period of anxiety and regret. And wanting things to start new and fresh. And be able to be grown with the Queen of Wands. 
she's very this came out too in the other spread she's very innovative very fearless courageous um she's also very mystical could represent an Aries the or Sagittarius so they could feel like they want to be more of themselves around you or get back to you to being being able to be yourselves around each other um this is about wanting transformation and this is their emotional connection to you So being able to feel like things evolved emotionally or you two are on the same page. Or it could just be wanting to come out of anxiety or regret or sadness. Um, okay. What does this person want with this Virgo? What does that person want with them? The chariot. So once and for all, move past pain, move past wounding. The nine of wands is putting so much energy into things and feeling like it was a waste of time. Like somebody's faith being tested with the nine of wands. But the chariot is about having tunnel vision towards the sun. That's how I see it. <coughs> so deciding that y'all are headed towards the best, most positive outcome you two see for y'all's relationship with the chariot. Being able to push through pain or doubt or your faith being tested by outside influences or by things that actually happened in the past. This person wants to be able to push past that and get towards the sun, get towards a happy place. Could want to go on a trip with the chariot and the sun. It's, I just... For like vacation, they could want to take a vacation to relieve some stress or show you that you're appreciated or something. So I'm going to pull past, present, future for Virgo and their person. What is this person's actions towards this Virgo in the past, the present, and two weeks into the future? Two weeks around whatever time period where you see this. If this is for you, past, present, future. This sun just keep coming out. Past, present, future for Virgo in their person, please. I'll shuffle two more times. Past the fool. Initiating some sort of journey. This is about starting a new journey or implementing a new way of doing things or trying to. Currently, they could even either be planning about what to do or they could have put the ball in your court, like gave you options and told you the ball is in your court or the ball is in their court. I don't know. I'm going to clarify, but what is their future actions towards Virgo? The Hermit. That's the Virgo card. Please clarify. Okay, strength. Nine of Pentacles. Okay. What is this two of wands about in the present? Yeah. The past, what is this fool about? Okay, what is this fool about? Okay. <clears throat> so in the past, they could have communicated to you that they want to take a leap of faith with you. They want to start a new journey. Either start over fresh or actually start um, a journey with you. Okay? Travel towards you. 
travel with you or something. Currently, they're trying to figure out a way, make a plan to come out of a nine of wands energy. So if you have been hurt in the past by them or not by them, if you've expressed that you don't really trust or have faith in this situation because of them or because of whatever, they're trying to strategize on how to bring you out of that or bring y'all out of that. Um, so you two can expand and be on the same page. In the near future, it's like the hermit strength. Um, so trying to be compassionate, possibly love you out of a side, love you out of a period of isolation, make you feel like it's safe to come out of isolation and let them in. Because this is about the strength of love. The strength of unconditional love and compassion. Being able to love somebody even when they're not very lovable. lovable because of how she's tending to this beast. This lion or whatever. Um, um, possibly trying to make you be more playful and come out of your comfort zone with them. Or trying to get you to take a break from work and come be more playful with them. Because this came out as the crown of energy too, the nine of pentacles, which is another Virgo card. Um, I feel like it's wanting you to either take a break from work to have fun with them or the other thing I said. I don't know why I'd be feeling the need to repeat myself. But I'm going to read this oracle card for Virgo. <coughs> Remy number 38, which is number 11. Um, let's see. It says, the courage of your love. Love is without reason. Rationality is like a cane. Judgment needs a cane because it is blind. When love arrives, thought dies in its shadows. Love is a sunrise, the sun kept coming out, while thought is only a flashing light. I do not bleat at you like a sheep, for to startle you from the slumber. I need to roar like a lion. You must awake, my beloved. There is no time to waste, for the wolves are circling, hungry for sacred flesh. So I shall roar mightily. And although at first you recoil in fear, soon enough you will see the wolves. You become aware and grateful to have been thus awoken. Ah, yes. You remember that you have a precious human life to protect. You fear me no more. You thank me. You jump on my back as if you were a warrior astride a wild mount. You roar, then along with me, awakening the others as we cause the ground to rumble. Disturbing those even in their deepest slumber. You, like me, are a fierce lion. A lion in the strength card is just in my brain. But I'm going to stop interrupting myself. Okay. You, like me, are a fierce lion, not a lamb to be led. So many, sl so many slaughters. Okay. Led to so many slaughters. Oh my gosh. It says, you like me are a fierce lion, not a lamb to be led to so many slaughters. The variety and opportunity for which is available in terrible abundance in our world. Okay. There is a Sufi, S-U-F-I, story about a mother with her breast leaking milk. She loses her child and once she finds him again... Instantly lets him suckle from as long as he needs. A Sufi master nearby says to his students, Do you think she would throw her baby into the fire? And the students all say, No, of course not. And the master replies, Allah loves his children more than she, with enough tenderness to throw them into the fire. So it is with love. At first, as a young heart, you want only comfort from your beloved. You cannot bear the thought of pain within them. Even for a moment, 
your own suffering is easier than bearing the suffering of your beloved. That young heart grows wise through experience. It becomes an elder, an ancient heart, tem tempered by grace and rendered strong with compassion. This is the great heart that can hold the suffering of the world within it, and yet still find space for peace and sweetness, for tenderness, and for the rapture. <clears throat> This is the heart that shines with courageous love. It is willing to feel and bear all suffering without judgment, whilst gently holding it in the truth of what that suffering really is. The drying out of the mind addicted to suffering. This drying out is necessary so that love can ignite itself and transform dead wood into living fire. The drawing out is a challenging and enduring process. I had to pause it. The path of freeing the heart from the effects of a fearful mind is an initiation into great power. So many lapses will happen before the heart grows strong enough to overpower old patterns and surrender without condition or equivocation. Equivocation. I think that's what it says. When it is ready to surrender... In such a way, the heart is free and allowed to simply be. Even the mind then finally freed from shackles and joyfully submitting to love declares, Let love be. In whatever way it shall be, I can bear it. I shall take refuge in it. I shall not turn away from it. I am that love. You are an, you are an ancient one with a heart older than the mountains. You are being asked to free yourself from too small from the two small loves of the youthful heart and come to understand and accept the wisdom of your mature heart. Your mature heart is not cursed with hardness or detachment, but with compassion and tenacious devotion to the cause that is most real and matters most, the quest for life of the human soul. Okay, Your ancient heart loves the soul and will roar like the lion of love at the wolves that could cut blah, blah, blah but the wolves that would casually devour it so trust in the courage of your heart it's a lot about courage <laughs> you are not cruel you are not hard you are not careless you are passion personified you are the lion of love so allow yourself to be the lion not the lamb stand true to your own heart cause trouble make noise be proud be mighty then rest after all that savage divinity, rest and restore. <laughs> For day after day, you shall claim your holy lands and refuse to give them up to less noble creatures. Connect this to your situation as it applies, okay, y'all? Because <laughs> I just got a lot of things in my head, but I'm going to keep reading. Though you survey their manipulations and attempts to claim power with compassion, you do not underestimate them or relax your vigilance. You shall not allow for even a moment that falsehood be accepted as truth in your heart. This oracle comes with a particular guidance for you. You are not to give into less than you are worth or to the shaming stories of others. Uh, the shaming stories of others of our culture that will cast your regal lying nature into a falsehood of beliefs that you have no choice or power. You are not to give in to the idea that you are a victim and cannot free yourself from suffering or that you are less than any other. These are lies. These are petty deceptions so unworthy of you. Do not believe them. Roar at them until the weak glue holding them together melts under the fire of your holy breath. Damn. And they lie dismembered and powerless at your feet. Then intend that these bites and bits and pieces and decay are lovingly returned to the earth mother through whom they can be used to fertilize new life. This oracle comes with another message for you. You have a challenge before you or that you are now moving through, but you have what is necessary to succeed and overcome it. No matter how long it has endured or how big you have built that challenge up to be in your mind, no matter how unsolvable the issue appears to be, there is and shall be victory beyond it, and it is imminent. This oracle comes to you to let you know that you are empowered to succeed. 
You have what is required within you to do it. And that the time for your victory is drawing near. Hmm. So do not give up. Instead, do the sacred honor and ritual as needed. And when you feel so inclined, open your mouth and roar love from the very depths of your being. Create a sound of truth for yourself. In that sound, you will hear the mightiest one of all roaring along with you, saying, yes, love, I am with you. And together we claim divine victory. So we roar how we roar. Okay. This is the honoring ritual. It says, say aloud, I call on Lion of Love and my own wise higher self. I now choose to assert the dignity of my soul and the power of my heart. I release all lesser bonds based in fear and deception. I no longer need to hold on to these. I am ready for truth and with unconditional love, I am supported, protected, guided on my path to victory, held in guardianship by the unending power of love, so be it. If you feel the need to get down on all fours and, <laughs> and roar a bit, do it with the relish. Then you have started the honoring process. The honoring ritual. Okay. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. This is kind of long. But thanks for watching. Peace.